Pivoting into computer science is so overwhelming and by far the most sought after question is how to become a full stack developer. There's so much advice out there where people are like, oh, learn Python first. And they're like, oh no, do JavaScript, um, brush up on your CSS skills. Oh, but then don't forget about React. And it's just like to the point where you don't even know where you're starting. You don't know where the finish line is. You can't even tell what path you're on. You don't really know if you're doing front end or back end. You don't really know the differences. So I'm gonna break it down for you guys in this video. If you're new here, I'm Liz, I'm a data science manager at Intel, so I do this thing for a living and it still confuses me to this day on the amount of programming languages and such like that. So if you're into programming, tech, navigating your life in your 20s, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Okay, so what is a full stack developer? It really isn't that deep. I don't know why people make such a big deal about it. Basically, when you're talking to developers, they wanna distinguish you into two buckets. One is front end development, which is more like HTML, CSS, JavaScript are your main three like programming languages with a framework like React to wrap it around. Now there's other frameworks like Angular and some other ones besides React, but I'm just gonna kind of break it down for you guys. And then you have backend, which is your second bucket, which is more like SQL, Python, those types of languages. It's gonna be the stuff that you don't see on the actual screen. So when I say screen, I mean front end is more like browser coding. You're coding websites. Um, you have the prettiness of the website, which is gonna be your HTML and CSS. And then what you interact with is the JavaScript. So when you click a button and it does something, that's gonna be JavaScript. Where backend is all the behind the scenes. When you sign into a website, it needs to store your username and password somewhere. It's gonna store it in a database. That's something you're not gonna see physically on the screen and that's why they call it backend development. Okay, so where do you start? Let's say you're brand new to coding, you kinda wanna touch it, you don't know if you're that interested. I recommend doing front end development and a lot of people say this, as well, and mainly because of its visual. It's very visual. So when you code front end, like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you physically see, when you code a different color, you see the color change. When you code something else, you see something move. It's visual because you're building websites. So I personally enjoyed it. It was one of the first languages I learned when I was getting into programming. So that is my 100% recommendation, but you have to learn where are you gonna code, right? And this is the part that throws people off and that I didn't know is like, okay, cool, you want me to start in front end development, where, where am I coding? Okay, you need to get a code editor. <laughs> and everyone, and I mean literally almost everyone, uses VS Code as their first coding editor. I still use it to this day. There's Visual Studio, which is like VS Code, but with the bells and whistles, and there's regular VS Code. Use regular VS Code, I will link it below and you can download it for free and install it on your computer and it makes it so much simpler, but a lot of people skip that step because they think that everyone has coded already. Not everybody has tried coding, okay? It's intimidating. Get VS Code and then you're gonna go to GitHub and you're gonna make an account on GitHub. I will link below how you do a what's called a repository and that's how you send your code from VS Code to GitHub. And that will be really good for you guys because then you'll be documenting your code and it's live, people can look at it, it's open source, if you wanna make it open source, which basically means that people can see the code of your website. But there's a class that I recommend to everyone, specifically females, sorry guys, um, it's She Codes, She Codes, and they do a great job on showing you how to set up VS Code, all that, how to do front end development. It's where I learned how to code, 100% recommend it, even if your guys sneak in there. It is so good. It has tutors, it has solution videos. I recommend, if you don't wanna bail out on coding and get frustrated with the free courses, I recommend doing a paid course. That's what I did. I'll link my discount below. But if you don't have money and you need to learn for free, I recommend Free Code Camp. That is a really good free coding website. So it's an alternative. Um, it's not as good in my personal opinion, but it will get you enough. It will get you there. So once you learn the basics, so that's like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, right? That's your basics. Then you're gonna tack on a framework and that's gonna be React or Angular or something like that. I recommend React. I thought it was very good. Um, I don't, I, it kind of depends who you're gonna go work for and we'll get to tips and tricks later. So just don't worry about the framework 
right now. Okay, so now on to backend. So backend, I recommend doing two different languages and this will get you pretty far if you're just trying to go for a general oversight. But again, I'll go over the details later of what I recommend doing instead of just kind of generalizing. But I think it's very important to learn a couple different languages just to kind of get a feel. And even if you want to like actually go into tech or go into computer science. So the first language I recommend is SQL because it's so universal for backend development. Everyone needs to know SQL. I took mine for free on Khan Academy. It was great information. The editor was actually built into the class. So you don't have to download an editor or you don't have to download any SQL applications. You code right on the website on Khan Academy. So check that out. The second language I recommend is Python because it's so universal and everyone, I swear to God, everyone ha knows something about Python. I feel like that is one of the languages where pe even people who aren't into computer science are like, oh yeah, Python. Like, I don't know what, they have like a cult, but take a basic Udemy class. I'll link the one I took below. And that one, you basically have these libraries. Each library has a purpose. You can get a web development library where you can make web applications. Or like I'm in data science, I use Pandas, which is a data science library. So it kind of depends what you want to focus on. Okay. That was a lot of information, <laughs> so hopefully you were taking notes. But the important part here is that is like a general idea. I could give you so many different languages to learn, but the thing is what you should be doing is going on an actual job application and seeing what languages they want you to have knowledge in. So for example, at Intel, I'm a data science manager at Intel, heavy into Microsoft. So. We are going to be using a lot of Azure data factories. We're going to be using a lot of C sharp. We're going to be using Microsoft languages, Microsoft compatible things where I wouldn't learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript and react because we built our web applications using C sharp and .NET. You see what I'm saying? So I know those things, but at the end of the day, I'm building it. I'm learning C sharp and .NET right now because I don't actually build it using the things that that I'm used to building things with. And then you can even build a website using Python. Like there are so many options. So what you want to do is take some like basic classes. Like I said, learn a little front end development, learn a little SQL. Those two things are really good. Then once you learn those two things, kind of start looking at job applications and going, Oh, this place likes to use TypeScript. Oh, this, I should learn Ruby, you know, and start seeing, what you should actually learn for the job. So you should tailor your learning to a job, like your dream development job. And that's what I recommend to most people because it is gets way overwhelming. There are so many different languages. Now, if you're interested in more details on data science focused kind of path or a front end development kind of focused path, I will link those videos here because I already filmed them. And I think I go into a little bit more detail when it goes to libraries with Python for data science little bit more detail on what front end development is. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.